Psalm 84. I'm going to read the whole thing, I believe. Beginning verse 1. How lovely is your tabernacle, O Lord of hosts. My soul longs, yes, even faints, for the courts of the Lord. My heart and my flesh cry out for the living God. Even the sparrow has found a home and the swallow a nest for herself, where she may lay her young, even your altars, O Lord of hosts, my King and my God. Blessed are those who dwell in your house. They will still be praising you, Salah. Blessed is the man whose strength is in you, whose heart is set on pilgrims. As they pass through the valley of Baca, they make it a spring. The rain also covers it with pools. They go from strength to strength. Each one appears before God in Zion. O Lord God of hosts, hear my prayer. Give ear, O God of Jacob, Selah. O God, behold our shield and look upon the face of your anointed. For a day in your courts is better than a thousand. Yeah. I would rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than dwell in the tents of wickedness. Yeah. For the Lord God is a sun and shield. The Lord will give grace and glory. No good thing will he withhold from them that walk uprightly. Yeah. O Lord of hosts, blessed is the man who trusts in you. Yeah. Lord, I just pray, God, for your anointing here in this morning. Yeah. God, open our hearts, Lord. Look at the longing, the desire, God, that we've had for your house, Lord, these past month and a half or so. God, I pray you would just yeah. fulfill that hunger and desire this morning with your presence, God, yeah. with yeah. your love, yeah. with your grace, with your kindness, God. Yeah. God, give us the strength, God, the refreshing that we need today. Yeah. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. And you may be seated. <coughs> if I can get my voice back here. How lovely is the house of the Lord. Amen. The place that he visits. Uh -huh. The place where he dwells. And that's because the God of the house is altogether lovely. Amen. Right. Amen. And he's altogether worthy. Yeah. And he's altogether wonderful. Praise God. Uh, Amen. He is our shelter from the storm. Amen. He is our refuge in times of trouble. Yeah. He's good. And his mercy endure it forever. Praise God. And his house is a house of prayer. Uh, a place where he can be found. Oh, thank God. And we are as his people. We as his people should be totally familiar, so to speak, with his house. In other words, we're not strangers here. Amen? Amen. Praise God. As Ephesians chapter 2 tells us, Now therefore ye are no more strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints and of the household of God. And are built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone in whom all the building fitly framed together groweth unto an holy temple in the Lord and whom ye also are building together for an habitation of God through the Spirit. Praise God. Can you see what Paul's saying here? It's not the building per se. That's so important. Or it's not the building, I'll say it this way, so much that's been missed. But it's us. Yeah, that's right. The born again believers in Jesus Christ. Right. Amen. We are his temple. We are his house. We and you are what I've missed. We are, I hope what we've all missed. Amen. Is being connected together as the body of Christ. Right. 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 We are his holy temple. The dwelling place of God. Amen. He built us together. Amen. As we read. He puts us together to be a habitation of God through the Spirit. It's where He inhabits. Amen. We say, oh, I love God's house, but if there was nobody here, I don't think you're going to find the manifested presence of God. You're going to find it only when, we're, when we come together. 
praise God. That's right. Amen. We are his house. And when we're apart, we're apart from the place where God dwells. Because he dwells in us together. I already said this scripture, as Jesus said, when two or three are gathered together in my name, there am I in the midst of them. Oh, I know that we individually are also temples of the Holy Ghost. Bible does talk about that. But it's like having, and I don't know if this is the greatest example, but it's like having the prayer room apart from the whole church building. You know? Or as the Bible says, it's like being a hand apart from the body. You only going to survive so long. Right. Amen. Amen. We need the whole building. We need the whole body of Christ. Uh, yes. Amen. I might be a hand. I might be an ear. I might, might, might be a mouth. The different parts the Bible talks about. As parts of, you know, we're members, it says. But I need to be connected to a body. Yes. 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 Amen. Yes. Praise God. The whole manifested presence of God can only come through the church uh -huh. as we individually fit our fit and frame together amen it takes the whole body coming together praise god you know we must let the holy ghost in us move in us move through us to connect us to flow through us to operate through us amen to affect and to empower the whole church Amen. So my part, if I'm a hand, is that, that I can be usable and I can affect the whole church. That I can be used to bless the whole church. My hand's not here just to serve itself. You know, this hand serves my mouth. This hand serves my head. You know, this hand serves my ear. It serves everything. And, and we got to look at ourselves that we're here to serve one another. That's right. Praise God. That's right. And so I need everybody else and everybody else needs me that's right praise god because we're the church as ephesians 4 goes on and continues it says from him the whole body joined and held together by every supporting ligament grows and builds itself up in love as each part does its work so we all have a part to play amen yeah amen. as we all find our place and do our part Amen. We bless the whole body. Praise God. A part, I'm just a soul part. Like a hand or a mouth. But I need to be connected with the whole body. Praise God. I'm talking about the church. Amen. This morning. The body of Christ. Has anyone missed the place where Jesus dwells? Amen. Has anybody missed the place where Jesus lives and moves? What's that, brother? Man? His body in his body, the church. Has anybody missed that? Yeah. yeah. Praise yeah. God. The psalmist said, going back to our opening scripture, my soul longs. Yes, even faints. Or another version says it like this, my soul yearns. Yes, even pines and is homesick. Uh -huh. For the courts of the Lord. Yes. My heart and my flesh cry out for the living God. He might say, well, Brother Beck, you've been here every week. It's, it's what I'm to say. Why not? Because I already just told you why. It's a church way. Mm -hmm. What I'm mm -hmm. saying. I can't find him all or get him all. I'm talking about everything I need for him. I can't get it all, all by myself. All the time. Right. Like Sister Grubb said, you know how many times I've come to church down, discouraged, defeated, and I've left just the opposite. That's right. Yeah. That was me on my own. <laughs> then I came into the presence of the Lord. Uh, that wasn't me alone anymore. Praise God. And I got what I needed. I got lifted up. I got strength. I got courage. This is a dangerous thing, folks, we just went through. Because there's a new mentality, see. 
keep your distance and stay away. Don't expose yourself. It's dangerous. And the, and the opposite effect versus course, why supposedly why we're supposed to do that. But spiritually speaking, mentally speaking, emotionally speaking, it's very dangerous. Very. I read somewhere there's been a I don't know, it was something like an extremely high number, like a 500% increase in, uh, in strokes and different things like that during this time. You know, and, and I've read other things along that health issues and all that. And every, and things have just gone way spiked because of all being isolated and all this and the fear that's in people's hearts. And, and, uh, you know, some people are saying it, it, it probably is true in many ways. Uh, the coronavirus itself may be less dangerous than all this other stuff that's happening. Amen. Just a thought. You know, but I need to be connected. That's the point we're making. I need to be connected with others that are praising and worshiping him and feeding on the word of God. Amen. And, and drinking of his spirit and fellowship with other precious, like-minded saints. That's right. Amen. As the Bible talks about, praise God. Others of like precious faith. I need that. Praise God. That's where he is. In the midst of the church. Yeah. It talks about in Revelation. He walks in the midst of the church. I can find him there. Amen. I said I can find him there if my heart and my flesh cry out. Yeah. To find the living God. I said. The psalmist said, my soul longs for the living God. I'm looking for the living presence yeah. of God. Yeah. I'm not looking just for some routine. I'm not just looking for some tradition. I'm not just coming here to put in my time, so to speak. Okay. Amen. I'm coming. I'm looking for the presence of the Lord. Amen. Yeah. I, need, I need that living presence. Yeah. I, I said a living presence. I'm not just honoring him because... Oh, he died 2,000 years ago. and I, Okay, I heard he rose again. No, i got to find him real here today. That's right. Amen. If he is risen, if he ascended, if he sent his spirit back like we read in the Bible, that means his presence is available to me today. And I'm looking for that presence. The living presence of the Lord. Praise God. You can find him. The Bible says if you'll seek for him with all your heart. If you come for another reason, you probably won't find him. It's as simple as that. This is actually a very simple religion. <laughs> Amen. You really stop getting down to things. It's very simple. Amen. If you want him, you can find him. If you search for him with all your heart, you find him. You don't search for him, you don't care. Well, you're probably not gonna find him. Pretty simple, isn't it? The psalm says, even the birds can find a place to dwell in God's house. In other words, the way I look at that, it's accessible to all. Everybody can come and find God. And find what they need from God. Amen. The Bible says further, blessed are those who dwell in your house. They will still be praising you. The house of the Lord has to be my house also. Amen. Not just his house. It has to be my house. It has to be the place where I dwell. I need to live and dwell there. I don't, I'm not saying move in with all your furniture and everything, but it needs to be a place I come to often that I'm very familiar with. Uh -huh. Amen. That I'm connected with. Amen. Praise God. This is my house. Why? Because my father dwells here. Praise God. Go ahead. I have to be here as often as I can. My heart and my soul needs to be here at all times. Even when I can't be here. And when you dwell or stay there, 
just looking and longing for God's presence, you won't be disappointed. Because He will show up. And then, as the scripture said, we just read, you will still be praising. Yeah. Praise God. Hallelujah. The scripture goes on to say, blessed is the man whose strength is in you, whose heart is set on pilgrimage. As they pass through the valley of Baca, they make it a spring. The rain also covers it with pools. They go from strength to strength. Each one appears before God in Zion. I don't know about you. I can't talk about myself. I need God. I, I'm sorry. I'm just weak that way. That's, that's what people say. That's not weak. That's a realization of knowing who you really are. Right. right. Amen. <laughs> Praise God. Amen. And that I'm just a creative being. I'm not God. I need God. Praise yes. God. I need His manifested presence. I said I need His manifested yes. presence. I don't need His general everywhere presence. I need Him to show up where I'm at. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. Praise God. Yeah. I need the church. Yes. Amen. Amen. Why? Because God and his body is my strength. I don't have it in myself. I'm sorry. You were looking for a Superman or a pastor. I'm sorry. I can't help you. <laughs> you know? I just have to keep on the clock, Kent. See all the time. <laughs> there's no, there's no Superman suit under here, as you can see. <laughs> Amen. I'm just a weak person who needs God. Yes, Lord. And, uh, but that's okay because He's my strength. Yeah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. He's my strength. Amen. And I don't need it all in myself. Amen. My heart needs to be set on coming to where he is. Yeah. To the church. To revivals. To Bible study. Yeah. To special meetings of his church. I can I gotta do that over and over and over again. Because that's where my strength is. That's right. That's right. Praise God. That's where I get my strength. And that means, especially in my hard times, yeah. my times of testing and sorrow. Yes. That is not a time to draw back. Amen. Or to separate myself from the church. I need to use those times instead to draw closer to God. To stay connected. Amen. I need to use those times in the valley of Baca. Uh -huh. Which that word is translated weeping. In the valley of weeping. In my sorrowful hard times. I need to use those times in the valley of weeping. As a time to dig deeper. And hit a new spring so to speak in him. You know, if you're out there in the desert and it's dry, amen, and you don't have anything, then you better dig and find some water. Yeah. Hit that new spring, so to speak, of his presence during those times of weeping. He said, when we walked through the valley of Baca, they turned it into a spring, they said. Use those times to find a new connection with God. Amen. Find a new spring of His presence. Yeah. Praise God. I can go from strength to strength, it says, and not suffer defeat, but appear before God in victory. The Bible says further, for a day in your courts is better than a thousand. I'd rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God. 
that dwell in the tents of wickedness. You know, I, I don't know where everyone has been spending their time over the past several weeks, especially your supposed extra time. Maybe you've spent a lot of time watching movies. Maybe, uh, you know, sports programs or listening to music. Maybe you spent a lot of time playing video games, exercising or studying or reading books. There's so many different things. I don't know, but, you know, if so, you may have missed the best investment of your time. It's where you could have been. Everybody follow me? You may have missed the best investment. If that's where you've been spending it. Praise God. You know, where have you been sowing? This past six weeks or so, where have you been sowing? The Bible says, be not deceived. God is not mocked. For whatsoever man soweth, that shall he also reap. For he that soweth to his flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption. But he that soweth to the Spirit shall of the Spirit reap life everlasting. And so my question is, are you coming out of this quarantine with a hunger and thirst for God? With a desire to get busy and to do the work of God? Or are you coming out Kind of spiritually apathetic, complacent, indifferent, and focused on carnal things. What you've sown during this time is what you're going to reap. You might not see it yet, but what you've been sowing is what you're going to reap. But I believe this has been a time that God has been calling us to prayer, to seek in his face. I believe God, uh, you know, and you've heard me say this over the past, whatever, several weeks, God, God has orchestrated, uh, God's sovereign. So he's allowed all this, he's orchestrating all of it. And it's a time for us to be drawn closer to God, to dig in deeper in God, amen. And so um, he's, uh, he's wanting us to use this time Amen. To pray more, to seek Him more, to get deeper in Him. Get back to maybe where we've been before, where we've yes. slipped. Yeah. Amen. And you know, it's not over yet, though. So there's still time, folks, if you've been missing it, so to speak, along that line, it's time to get in. It's time to get in. Mm -hmm. yeah. Really stop focusing on God. Amen. We. Why? Because we need to understand that the time spent in the house of the Lord is better than a thousand times more time spent anywhere else. Yes. You know, I, I used to hear, you know, some of my pastors and the pastors, people say, I'd rather be in the house of the Lord this morning than be the best hospital in, in town. Uh, well, I'd rather be in the house of the Lord than to be anywhere in town this morning. Yeah. Praise God. I don't care about the hospitals. We ought to love the presence of God. We ought to love the house of God. And I'd rather be here than anywhere. Yeah. A day here is better than a thousand anywhere else. Mm -hmm. That's what the psalmist said. Amen? Yeah. Praise God. If it isn't, it's because you're not connecting with the Lord. That's the only reason. If you connect with Him when you come here, there's nothing that compares with it. I don't care your best day on the beach is going to compare with that. Right? Amen. Your best day on vacation won't compare with that. That's right. We're coming into the presence of God, really connected with Him. Oh, hallelujah. We ought to delight in God's presence, in His Word, and in His body. The Bible says, in thy presence is fullness of joy. Yeah. Yeah. Thy right hand, there are pleasures forevermore. Yeah. Anybody ever found that out? Discovered it for yourself? Yeah. 
Oh, hallelujah. That's what makes me keep coming back, coming back, coming back. Because I've found something there before, Brother Hawks. Yeah. And I just keep coming back there. You keep more and more and more. Amen. Amen. I mean, if there was nothing in this, there's nothing about it. Oh, yeah. Probably would have given up a long time ago. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that... Amen. If I've never found anything, every time I've come, I would have gave up a long time ago. Yeah. But I'm telling you, folks, it's real. Amen. There is a real God, a real God that wants to connect with you. And he's alive today. He is the living God. Amen. And you can connect with him. Amen. If you seek him with all your heart. Praise God. Amen. That's the God I serve. Hallelujah. I don't know about yours. Praise God. Thank you, God. I mean, where else are you going to find that? That's right, sister. You're not going to find it anywhere else. If we don't love and delight in Him in all His ways, then would we even want to go to heaven where that's going to be full of His glory, full of His presence all the time? Right? I mean, if you don't love that now, why would you want to go up there? No, I'm just being real this morning. If we'll really get connected with his presence now, we'll realize there is nothing better and no better place to be than in the house of the Lord. There's no better place to be. I'll just connect with him. Find him. Oh, the joy you give me, the peace you give me, the love you put in my heart. Lord, your presence is only around me. You know, we'll, we'll, we'll say there's no better place to be than to be in your house, even if I consider my presence there as being insignificant. You know, that's what he's saying. You know, I, I'd rather just be a donkey. Why? Because at least I'm in his presence. That's right. That's right. That's right. You might say, I'm, I'm insignificant. I'm not important there. Yes, you are. But anyway, get over that. Because if nothing else, at least you're in his presence. And, of course, like I said, it's not true anyway. You are important. We've already talked about your part of the body. Every part of the body is important. Amen. Praise God. It reminds me of a song. And I don't know if I should even try to sing this because you've seen how my voice has been this morning. Right. Some of you might remember this little chorus. Just one moment. Just one moment. In your presence. Just one hour. In your power, troubles are gone. I'm not alone. My soul is finally free. Just one moment in the presence of the Lord. If you know that song, join me. Just one moment. In your presence, just one hour, in your power, how goes our goal, I'm not alone. My soul is finally free. Just one moment in the presence of the Lord. Oh God, thank you, Jesus. Just one moment. If I can connect with him for just one moment. 
And if I can get in His power, just one hour in His power, amen, then troubles are gone. I'm not alone. My soul is finally free. And all it takes is just one moment in the presence of the Lord. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Why would you want to trade that for time and intensive weakness? What's that? I'd say everything the world has to offer you. Every pleasure, fame, fortune, excitement, every luxury. But as the scripture says, what does it profit you from gaining the whole world? Lose your own soul. And all of it falls short anyway. There's nothing that compares with the presence of God. It's all emptiness. Amen. That falls short of what God has created you for and what he has laid up for those who love him. You follow me this morning? I said, it's all emptiness and it all falls short, far short of what God has created you for and what he has laid up for those who love him. The Bible says, why would you want to trade all of that junk for what he's got? make sense. And then the Bible goes on to say, for the Lord God is a son and sheep. The Lord will give grace and glory. No good thing will he withhold from those that walk uprightly. Amen. The Lord, see, he will shine his light on you, even when you're in the darkness. In your darkness. And the light is warm. The light is strengthening. The light is comforting. Yes. The light is revealing. Yes. Amen. And he is a shield for you. He will protect you from the enemy. Yes. Yes. Amen. He will give you his grace, yes. his unmerited favor and blessings, and his glory, his manifested presence and power. As a matter of fact, it says he won't withhold any good thing from them that walk upright. Amen good thing. There's some things he knows that are not good for you. Yeah. That you think are good for you. So sometimes we don't get everything we ask for or everything we want. Because he knows you better than you know yourself. That's right. He knows what it will do to you. He knows how it will affect you. Right? Yeah. But if it's good for you, oh yeah, he knows. And so are you going to listen to the lies? That's right. Are you going to listen to the lies? What lies are that? The lies that tell you that you're going to lose out and so much if you surrender everything to Jesus Christ. Oh, if you surrender to Jesus Christ, you know, if you do what the word of God says, you know, you go to that church, if you listen to that pastor, that and on and on and on. You're going to lose out on so much, sister. You're going to listen to those lies. You know, well, if I surrender to Jesus Christ, it means I won't be in control. I can't do everything I want. That's true. But that's not a bad thing, considering the good things he has laid up. Matter of fact, or are you going to listen to God this morning? Who says, you're going to lose out on everything I have for you if you hold back and keep your life for yourself. So who, who's, who's, you know, whose treasures do we rather lose out on? We want to lose out on the treasures the devil says he has for, for me. Or do we want to lose out on the treasure God says he has for We're going to lose out on one or the other. And guess what? I think God got a lot more than he does. I think I'm going to choose this side. You know, add it up. 
They're more with us. The prophet said that they'd be with them. That's right. That's you. And God owns and fills the whole universe. This little earth is just a little speck. That's right. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. And they that dwell therein. He owns the cattle on a thousand hills and everything else on that hill too. Amen. Praise God. I think I think I choose God's signs. Yes. Guess what? You're gonna need real logic. You know, you know what I'm saying? See, the devil has been lying since the garden of Eden. You know, hey, that you, hey, Eve, you're, you know, God just doesn't want you to have everything. You know, God's holding out from you. So that's why he don't want you to eat of that tree. Because you know you eat of that tree, you know, you're going to know good and evil for yourself. You're going to be able to make your own decisions. And, you know, you, and, and uh, you know, you're not going to be restrained anymore. You know, that, that mean old God that just, you know, he only gives you a little bit, you know, every so and so often. He really don't want you. Your best. You don't have your best interest in mind. And she listened to that. And guess what? People have listened to that same those same lies ever since. Yeah. Oh. So what you've been seeking, Amen. What have you been seeking? Where have you been sowing? That's what you're going to get. Amen. And everyone, I want to say this, everyone has been impacted by the coronavirus. Don't even try to tell me you have not. Everyone has been impacted. You've either gone up, so to speak, or you've gone down, so to speak, spiritually speaking. No one has remained the same. Okay? I'm not saying that in a bad way. Just that's reality, folks. Amen. This journey that we're on is like being on a hill on your bicycle, right? Up that hill. I never liked those hills. <laughs> but you know, if I was going to get on to the next thing, I had to go up that hill and get over it, right? And so it's like being on a hill and. Uh, if you're not pedaling, you're going to stop rolling backwards. <laughs> you know, so everyone's been impacted. I've been impacted. You've been impacted. We've all been impacted. Right? And uh, no one has remained the same. I hope you're moving forward in God. You're going up in God, so to speak, and not back in God. But you know, everything you give to God, I said everything you give to God, think about it, is an investment. You're investing. What are you investing in? I'm investing in the kingdom of God, the kingdom of heaven. Amen. While everything you hold on to is going to be lost. God says this earth, this world is going to be burned up with fire and the works thereof. All going to pass away. So the only thing you can do with what you got, see, that's going to make any sense, is invest it somewhere that's going to continue forever. Store your treasures in heaven. That's the only thing that's going to last. That's what Jesus told us to do. Amen? Yeah. I'm not just saying this off the top of my head. He said, throw your treasures in heaven. And, uh, you know, now is the time. Now is the time to get right with God if you're not right with God. Amen. And to go all the way. Because he is gathering an end time church, an end time bride right now. Right now. Right now. This is the day. This is the hour. Um, you need the church. The church needs you. I love the church. I miss the church. I'm so happy. Amen. That we're together again. Amen. Don't even set your, all your hopes and dreams on this world. It's fleeting. It's passing away. And, and like I said, there's so many other things I, I could preach on. I need to talk to you about in the future. But I, think, I want you just to think. 
along this line, we've probably just seen what the Bible calls the beginning of salvation. Okay? Am I trying to scare you? No. But I'm letting you know that, matter of fact, this is hard for me to say to our young people. I don't know if you've got much future. What I mean by that, you may, you may never, you might not have another 30 years or 50 years or 60 years like you know, Brother Rawls and I had growing up. You, know? uh, you might only have another five years. You might only have another seven years, another 10 years. And I'm just saying that as a, a point of truth. I'm not trying to scare anybody or take your dreams and hopes away. But I'm saying, with all love and mercy in my heart, you might never have that opportunity. I believe that's how close we are to the coming of God. And so what you're saying, brother, that just forget all that stuff. No, I'm not saying forget it all, but better seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and make that your hope. Make that your main treasure. Make that your main treasure. Amen. Because the Bible says where your treasure is anyway, there will your heart be also. And, you know, let's stop looking at heaven like some mamby pamby place that, you know, there's not going to be nothing to do. We're just going to be laying around on clouds. Uh, the scripture said, Jesus told this parable, amen, about the men with the talents, remember? He gave him all these talents. He sent them out. Hey, hey, I give you two. I give you five. I give you ten, whatever. Right? And uh, they went out and they traded and they made more. Most of them. You know about the one who only had one. He didn't do anything. You know, he said, you know, basically he said, you know, you slothful, lazy guy. Just get out of here. You know? But the rest of them who did something with it. You know what he told them? You know? Uh, enter... He says, you've been faithful over a few things. I'm going to make you ruler over much. He says, here, you be, okay, you be over five cities now. Uh, you be over ten cities. What, what was he saying? In the coming kingdom. There is a kingdom coming. And it's going to be a real place. And we're going to have uh, our hopes and dreams and treasures there. Some of us are going to be ruling over cities, over whatever, provinces, amen. And so that's where we ought to be setting our hope and dream. That's right. Because that's going to last forever. You know, down here, it's not going to last that long. Hey, you know, I was, you know, I was an officer in the Air Force. I had some position, but guess what? That's gone. That's been gone for over 20 years now. So, you know what I'm saying? It all passes away. Just transfer your hopes. I'm telling our young people and all of us really. Transfer your hopes. Transfer your dreams to the kingdom. The kingdom has come. The kingdom has come. Transfer your hopes there. I want to get a good job there, so to speak. Amen. I want to have a good home there, so to speak. Amen. I want to have position there, so to speak. That's the only thing that's going to matter. Where am I going to end up in the kingdom? Oh, praise God. I hope this has been a real message this morning. Amen. You know what I mean by that, right? It's real. That's the truth. That's where we're at. Amen. And that's where we need to be headed. Praise God. Hallelujah. I believe the time before Jesus' return is short. Yeah. Are you ready? Are you ready?